ships. Staggered line. Chipmaster. They outnumber us three to one. Then it is an even fight. All cruisers fire at will. Burn their mongrel hides. Credo versus Pedo Baptism. Here we go! Let's see, the Baptists are outnumbering the uh, Presbyterians tonight, so. How you feeling, R.C.? Feeling all right? Just working. If there are more Baptists and Presbyterians, that's good, because that makes it more of a fair fight. Hey, Nate, you baptizing babies? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, man. No. Oh. I'm a, I'm well. a I'm a Credo Baptist. I, I wrote for Credo Magazine, man. Credo. Credo. <laughs> I just was hope, having a little hope. That's all. That's all, yeah, that's all right. That's all right. So, Nate, I, I'm, we're, we're still reforming, right? Is that how it works? Yeah, yeah, that's well, right. Well, you are, obviously. <laughs> Some people th think that the Presbyterians are God's frozen chosen. But... The Baptists, like Steve Lawson, have a little bit more room for such uh, expression. In fact, somebody asked me this morning, did Dr. Lawson suffer from mental illness? <laughs> and I said, no, I really think he enjoys it. <laughs> I'm whatever R.C. is. That was the mic drop right there. He Bob got Godfrey it in just the water. got baptized. <laughs> Let he me say me before it. Bob does. Wouldn't, wouldn't you know the Baptist would drop it in the water? Yeah. <laughs> there, you're in. He's been converted to sprinkling. <laughs> That's all you need. Just a little dip will do you. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. You can preach through a lot of books and never get to baptism. And we all need, some of us more than others, to be instructed on baptism. <laughs> I, I, I apologize. I, you, I couldn't resist. I have you know, I've, I've been told by a reputable Presbyterian pastor that I am a deep water Presbyterian. That's good. <laughs> you're, you're saying that there is a conservative economy that's popping up all over this. And we've been, yep. we pointed out the last couple of years how easy God has made it just to be the church. Right. Yeah. I'll, I'll have your doors open. Don't require a vax oh, and no face mask. And yep. your church blows up. Right. You could even be Baptist. Yep. I mean, is that the bar's low? <laughs> you can even be Baptist. Knox, Knox was like, did he just say that? I'm just saying. Yeah. Say I'm speaking uh, of which. I'm no. just kidding. I love you guys. <laughs> um, uh, eighteen over eighteen hundred businesses have signed up. It's incredible. We have jobs even up in Canada. I've tried to not let the Canadians in, but, but no, I'm kidding. I love <laughs> the Canadians, just like the Baptists. <laughs> 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 In Acts chapter 18, when you come across Apollos, it is mentioned that he was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he was speaking and teaching accurately the things concerning Jesus, being acquainted only with the baptism of John. And then later we are told that uh, Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. And that's a great model right out of the book of Acts for correcting an inadequate teaching. Apollos obviously did not mean to misconstrue uh, the issue of baptism. We need to expose false teachers who willfully and intentionally are attacking the very foundation of the gospel itself. Yeah, Paulus did what, you know, what the best of his knowledge until Priscilla and Aquila told him to baptize babies. Uh, I, I was just reading this book of Acts. <laughs> Since the Roman Church rejects the gospel, are Roman Catholic baptisms valid? Why or why not? <laughs> so, 
Sound, refoc sound reform folk differ on that question. <laughs> and still can love one another, maybe. I must hold the hypothetical possibility that someone in contradiction to the sacramental teachings of the Roman Catholic Church actually was a closet Baptist, in which case, yes, there would be eff efficacious <laughs> baptism. I usually don't like Al's answers on baptism, but I'm pretty happy with that one. Speaking of baptism, I just read the questions. I know it's a huge and often controversial subject, but could anyone give some advice to someone who struggles on the Pado versus Credo baptism subject who has been praying but still is torn between the two sides and is hoping to have children as soon as the Lord wills? Thank you. That's a really easy one. <laughs> Have the child baptized. <laughs> well, I would say this. Six and a half hours later. So only to have somewhat of equal time, um, So anyway, I, 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 I realize I'm odd man out, but as John Knox said, God plus one makes majority. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think the great majority of my heroes of the faith and history, people who have had the greatest impact on my thinking as a, as a Christian are hardcore Presbyterians. They're wrong, but uh, no, just, did you? Did, did I make you drop that? I couldn't believe it. No. What kind of conference is it? And uh, while we may be in, in different denominations here on this uh, uh, platform, what d divides us is relatively uh, few matters. And. Um, um, if you all just became Dutch Reformed, everything would be perfect. Aranya <laughs> Bova. Then again, we wouldn't be meeting in a meeting house this large. <laughs> a gross revelation of pragmatism. <laughs> it works at the moment. Um, <laughs> So, so well, and please, the, please and the, add to that. Well, the, the good and necessary consequence would be something like infant baptism and that great text in Acts chapter 2. <laughs> but I won't... R.C. is still with us. <laughs> <laughs> to, to you and to your children. Yes. But, but the doctrine of the Trinity, because I, <laughs> because I love you. <laughs> That's becoming debatable, but go ahead. <laughs> Six and a half hours later. And, and at that point, you're drawing a good and necessary consequence. I'm, I'm done. Oh, we're done? We're done. <laughs> I was wanting to reread well, the question. Well, we could go back to... <laughs> Because I, I, think, I think we left the question I think we a while ago. All of a sudden, we got to infant baptism, and then like, all right. I just would like to see that question one more time. Well, disciple the nations, teaching them to obey everything that Jesus has commanded, and of course, baptizing them and their babies. Um, <laughs> one of the um, the debate has begun. Um, I, I, I can't, can, can you find that in there, Jeff? I don't see that in there. No. But Stop the, looking at my notes. You didn't email no, that to me, I promise. The, uh, the promise is to you and to your children. Oh.
Oh, and there you go. all those oh. are Lord your God. Amen. Yeah, Let's baptize them. Everyone who was no, baptized now he woke was those up. who heard no, We've been talking the about three tools of liberty, and it took <laughs> baptism before you decided to say, wait a no, second. No, it's, it's, the, it's the Presbyterian partial citation of Acts 2.38 oh, that woke okay. me up. That woke you up. All right. <laughs> there all we right. go. Dr. White's back. <laughs> all right. Welcome back. Dr. He's awake. Welcome back. <laughs> So how would you explain to uh, a layperson who is uh, on the fence and confused about whether these are issues that we need to be standing firm for? Well, in one sense, we don't need to be involved with reconciliation because the one necessary prerequisite for uh, reconciliation is estrangement, and we don't have any of that. Now, how do we reconcile the different views that we have, like on baptism? Well, so far, we haven't been able to do that. <laughs> the only way that can happen is if one or all of us change our position on the thing. And so I'm willing to wait. Uh. That never affected our relationship. Neither did pedo-baptism. In fact, he asked me to debate him on pedo-baptism at his conference. And I said, why would you do that? It's your conference. <laughs> I said you have no chance. <laughs> and there's a wonderful uh, Dutch immigrant in that church, a godly man, an evangelist from the heart, who in his youth had served in the Dutch Navy in Indonesia. And after I read that statement, one nation is not more worthy than another, he came up to me and he said, I feel so bad. That is not the way we felt in the Dutch Navy in Indonesia when I was there. Well, the law and the gospel were touching that man's heart at a point where he looked back on his life and he said, we felt superior. Now, it's hard when you're Dutch not to feel superior. <laughs> Dutch privilege. Du <laughs> <laughs> My wife would want to say at this point that if you're tempted to say, if you're not Dutch, you're not much. You can't say that anymore, Bob. <laughs> what you really need to say is, if you're not Hungarian, you're a barbarian. Um, if you're single, get married. If you're married, have kids. And if you have kids, go baptize, go baptize them. <laughs> go baptize them. Until next time, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> go fight, laugh, and feast. And somebody protect me from Dr. White. <laughs> so how many texts in the Old Testament explicitly name the New Covenant? There's one, Jeremiah 31. It's the only place where that phrase is used, I think. How many texts in the Old Testament explicitly refer to the future royal uh, ruler as a Messiah? There's one that's undisputed, Daniel 9, 25. How many texts in the Old Testament say that the seed of the woman is going to crush the head of the serpent? There's one, Genesis 3, 15. And, and I think I would want to ask Doug, how many texts in the whole Bible say we should baptize babies? Um, and... and or give them communion? <laughs> don't, don't, don't respond to that. Yeah. Because it's a, it's a very important question, and it's a, a question that, yeah, relates to, do you re only read the New Testament, or do you also read the Old Testament? Um, <laughs> you know, why in the New Covenant does God exclude a category of people that He loved in the Old Covenant, namely children? If, um, um, but no, we don't want to get, go there. And, uh, <laughs> Why does God allow polygamy in the Old Testament? God's plan for marriage is clearly defined in Genesis 2, 24. But there seems to be a disconnect between the principle and the practice. Since Bob is Mr. Old Testament, uh, <laughs> We'll let Bob deal with all the children from the polygamy relationship. All those holy children. Oh, yeah.
Mr. Chairman, are we moving on? <laughs> are you sufficiently triggered? I, I, I don't have any, I have nothing more to say. I don't know what I could say to that. I, I, don't know how, I don't know how you, I don't know how you have Satan deceiving nations that all just got slaughtered. They, they don't exist. They're killed by the second coming of Christ. And you can't conceive of any way unbelievers could. You read Revelation 19. If you can conceive of it, you convince me and then I'll repent. What about babies? We baptized them. <laughs> and R.C. would say, Lawson, what do we have to do to make you to be a Presbyterian? I said, I'd love to be a Presbyterian. You have more money. We have a lot of questions. I would like to talk about how Presbyterians have more money than Baptists, however. That would be an interesting topic. Point of difference there. Here, as we sit in this facility. <laughs> the, the first time I walked into this facility, I happened to meet a Baptist speaker at the door. And uh, as I looked around, I said to him, how is it that all you Baptists are not post-millennial? And uh... we are thankful for our host facility. Baptism, amazing grace, grace and his benefits is what it communicates. So, beloved, look back to your baptism if you doubt his forgiveness. Remember, remember, baptism, amazing grace, grace and his benefits is what it communicates. So, beloved, look back to your baptism if you doubt his forgiveness. Yeah. Remember.